everyone who I'm going to call out here by name, mm -hmm. I consider them friends. So I believe that they all can take it. Okay? Okay. Adam Hogue. They have to learn how to win. David Haw. He wrote about experiencing, experiencing winning being an important part of quarterback development. I'm not sure I could call Patrick Finley a friend, but I respect him. I think he does very good work. Careful, Bears Twitter gets mad when you point out that winning is better than losing. Dan Wiederer. Eventually, they have to take a step in the direction of where they can win a game through the air late. I was texting with Dan Wiederer on Sunday before he wrote that piece in the Tribune. And he said, when the Bears game ended, he said, you really don't care if your offense can't score in crunch time? And I responded, because I needed to get these takes off. <laughs> I said, Dan, that's such a misleading characterization. I care when it matters. It doesn't matter right now. They aren't built to win. They have the third most dead cap space in the NFL. They were supposed to be a five-win team this year. He's not a finished product, and neither is the roster. It's not close, but they're so far ahead of schedule, it's not even funny. So to harp on a negative, like, crunch time execution is missing the forest through the trees. Fields is special, and now they get to build around a special talent at the most important position in sports, a position that, by the way, the Bears have literally never had anyone special at. If he still isn't scoring in crunch time next year or the year after, get back to me. And Wiederer, I understand that he was on deadline, only responded, so far ahead of schedule, question mark? Wow. So my question. <laughs> I like that we just heard Danny doing an impression of Danny during that. Like yes, there's a Weeder yeah. impression and a Parkins impression within Parkins reading both. There was no role for Dan Weeder. Very meta. Danny had Very it covered. Meta. Yes. So my question for all of these Bears writers mm. is have you lost your mind? Do you watch football and not just the Bears? Because, yes, it was a bad pick six. Yes, they snatched snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. Yes, in the micro, it was a bad loss to a bad team who they, by the way, weren't that much better than. But there is no evidence that suggests you have to learn how to win in order to one day be a winner. There's no evidence that suggests that. Peyton Manning was 3-13 and as a rookie. He was 500 through his first four years in the NFL. Guy went to four Super Bowls with four different coaches, has a couple of rings. Troy Aikman was 1-15 at the beginning. Won three Super Bowls. Justin Fields has made 20 starts. The team sucks. They are terrible around him. The season is a massive, overwhelming success already. Already. So this idea that that loss Sunday mm -hmm. was anything more than a loss Sunday is so ridiculous and not founded by any. The only quarterbacks who come into the NFL right away and win at the beginning are quarterbacks on good teams. Like Russell Wilson, 2012 with the Seahawks. Ben they have the Legion of Boom. The Steelers. Yeah. yeah. They, 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 Pat Mahomes, he inherits an 11 win team. Joe Flacco. Mm -hmm. D d d one of the best defenses ever. D Dak Prescott inherits the best offensive line we've seen in 20 years and throws to Jason Witten and Des Bryant. There is no example in NFL history of a quarterback just coming in on a bad team and then they're immediately awesome. There isn't one example of it. So, if, so the idea that Justin Fields needs to prove that he can win, hmm. wins are not a quarterback stat. They're not, it's a team game. Mm -hmm. like I, it, it, this isn't the NBA. Well, I, I, I pushed back uh, a bit because I want F Justin Fields to be able to drive them with two minutes left and three timeouts, the 30 or 40 yards that you need to kick a game-winning field goal. I do too. And, and, and I think he will obviously need to do that. At some point, that's the expectation. And it's, is it wrong to root for him to be able to do it and to be upset when he does not do it? There are no more tank benefits, really, between they don't need a quarterback, so you're not in the tank mode to go get oh, a quarterback. Well, sure there are. I mean, the dude, I mean, the... But, 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 it, it but could, it, I mean, it could be the difference between being able to trade the first round pick for multiple first mm -hmm. round picks or draft the number one wide receiver like Jamar Chase or the number one left tackle or the number three wide receiver or the number okay. three left tackle. Okay. But, 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 but I'm not even arguing. I mean, like, I, I'm not even. Bears fans can root for wins and you can be mad when he loses and when he doesn't drive down the field and execute in that spot. But to pretend like it is going to 
have any sort of ramification or bearing for like a winning culture or or for him as a grow as a to grow and develop like it's so he needs to start building an inventory of successes the more you do stuff well the easier it gets that's how confidence works right I mean, does that does that guy lack confidence no you know he he, he won all, he won offensive player of of the month or no no Gino Gino was player that he just, he just won like the FedEx Ground Player of the Week right he was the guy the guy is setting records number one player in fantasy mm -hmm. talked about on ESPN being talked about in the the MVP conversation by by Rex Ryan he is uh the guy the guy won in college the guy won in high school the, my point is this they could go zero and seventeen this year and every week after the games. The players would say what matters is winning, not development. And every week after the game, the coaches would say what matters is winning and not development. And then you would hit the offseason. You would draft some guys with high draft picks. You would sign some guys with all of your free agent money. They would get to training camp. And because they're professional athletes with a rational confidence and they think they might have Superman as their quarterback, they would think that they could win the Super Bowl. Like they, these are not guys that are just going to be like, oh damn, we never won, we we can't win. Mm. They're gonna, they, they, it it doesn't leave them, and so I think that's what the Bears writers often miss, or some writers often miss. I don't want to like too generalize, <laughs> because like, because of course the players after the game should be mad that they lost, because they got to get ready for the Jets. And the Packers, and like it's a week to week league, and they could suffer a career ending injury, and the contracts aren't guaranteed. So, of course, it matters to them if they win or lose, but it will next year. And the same thing with the coaches. But you should be able to zoom out, in my opinion. And I think that that's like a burden of because they all say it in front of the microphone. And they cherish their the access of like we're in the locker room and mm -hmm. we're on the field and we're at the press conferences and so like they almost have to like parrot what the players and coaches are saying back to them as being factual. It's just not. It doesn't go away. Anthony, would you like a piece like of uh, Mr. Danny here? I feel like there's you know like the 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 point that Danny's making is is on one end of it. I feel like the point that that some of the writers or even here in here in David Hall in the mornings make. I feel like are are on opposing ends of it, and I feel like I, I've heard speaks throughout the week arguing for the nuance in between mm -hmm. those two points of view, and I agree with it because there there are benefits to to seeing success in those moments. It doesn't mean Justin Fields would lose confidence between now and then, but it, it can have a benefit if he gets on the same page with whether it is Darnell Mooney, whether it is Chase Claypool, the assets that are here on the roster right now. Yeah, you won't end up having. 52 different guys on the field yes. on the roster with Justin Fields next season than you do right now. So in evaluating the Bears quarterback this season is extremely important. But beyond that, you do want to see who else can be a part of a winning formula moving forward. Can this new coaching staff, a first-time head coach, first-time offensive play caller, has this first-time general manager put any talent on the roster that looks like they can be a part of a winning formula but, but, moving and, forward? But hold on, My Danny. Point, cause, cause, though, go, go ahead. I, I just, that, 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 I, that's a point I've been trying to make. It's like some people have comped it to a baseball rebuild, and it's just not the same because the roster turnover is not the same. The timelines are not the same. There's like, you know, there's only a couple guys who are Darwin Barney on this Bears team, but there's a lot of people who are going to have, you're going to have to get utility out of some of these guys. You're going to have to figure that out along the way here, too. I think what's just maddening to me is how much the goalposts have moved. They're awful. Like they, they have the third most dead cap space in the NFL, and Vegas said they were one of the three worst teams in the NFL coming into the year. And now 10 games into the season, you have a record-setting quarterback, a guy who looks legitimately special, that speaks you believe is going to be here for a decade, that they're going to be able to build around with massive assets in the offseason. And people now holding him to the standard of, well, you got to win the games late. What? When did. N right now? <laughs> right now. Throwing to these guys, with those guys blocking, with that front seven against these opponents. He, th the standard is wins and losses in year one in this system, year two. And the guys played 20 NFL games. Yeah. Like, like I, I feel like it's like, well, we're the big, bad Chicago media, and we're market three, and so we gotta, we got to hold you accountable and hold you to a high standard. He, A-plus, 
he's, he's this season is an overwhelming right. success by any objective measure from what we thought it was going to be at the start of this season. And if they win out or they lose out, we are going to go into next year with so much damn hype and optimism for this team. I, I just I just think holding him to any sort of referendum or this team to but any We're not sort at of the start of this season. We're not at the start of this season. We're in the middle of the season and we've seen stuff and we want him to get better. Dilfer had two double minuses for him in the final six plays of that Bad moment. Plays. Right, bad, bad plays. plays. He threw threw that one like at Claypool's calf instead of throwing it at the helmet to give him a chance to make a back shoulder throw, and then not getting rid of the ball and and, and just taking that sack on the fourth down play. So, are, are we allowed to talk about that stuff? And of and, and of course, we there's are. there's the nuance in there to well, me no, to be able course, to talk about a, that. Like I said, it was a terrible pick six. It was a terrible loss. But I just, I of course, of course, there should be criticism mm-hmm. of of bad moments from Justin Fields. My thing is that the, the examples I gave you, it was all tied to this idea of winning or losing the game, like that the that the, the, this, this idea of like you have to learn how to win, and if you don't win now, he can't win later. Like that's just that's not based in anything in NFL history. It's just. It's just not. You have a lot of people with you <laughs> on uh, on the text line. A lot of people thankful for you, thankful for it's the, a team the take. Game. Like, right, Ant? Like, you, you, wins are not a quarterback stat. Everybody I don't is- think, yes, lo- losing this season or, or a, a quarterback not putting up big passing numbers is not only dependent upon the quarterback. While at the same time, I, I do think there are cultural benefits to winning. I, I do think that. That you're because I, I consider myself a dispassionate guy, even as the you know the jock in these conversations. But I do think you're 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 too dispassionate about the benefits of being around winning, the benefits of experiencing victory. It doesn't mean that you can't win in Justin Fields year three and four and thirteen. Beat the by Niners. Not winning this they beat season. the Patriots on Monday Night Football. He let he, you know in the college football playoffs. And, and, and here's the thing. Here's, here's, here's what I think. Here's is, the thing, Danny. I'm, I'm sorry, Ann, but yeah. it, he did lead him back in the Washington game, and that's a win if Darnell catches it. And he makes the plays at the end of the Dolphins game, and EQ drops the fourth down play. So, so they, well, that's the thing. This, this shouldn't only be. And I've been around people of this the entire. Season. In fact, I've texted with both of you about this, even in the midst of going back last season. Mm-hmm. It shouldn't only be a Justin Fields conversation. That is the most important portion right. of the conversation. But in addition to the playmakers he's throwing to and everything like that, just the infrastructure that the Bears have needs to evolve. And it appears to be in the process of evolving. But you even go back to last season with that high dollar defense. There were se- I said this to you on Monday speaks. There were several games last season mm-hmm. in Justin Fields' rookie year in the Matt Nagy Bill Lazor offense where he did make fourth quarter drives, put points on the board, put them within a score and then the defense gives up the preceding score to put the game away or give them a lead and the defense gives up the lead in the following series. So we we have seen several exam- examples of Justin Fields' ability mm-hmm. to respond in those moments at some point of course it didn't have to be this season, but the Bears as a franchise We'll need to get there. I'm out of here, but just okay. I just remember how much that 2018 season really taught Mitch Trubisky and the Bears how to win. <laughs> <laughs> these takes, hey these takes had to get off. Yeah, Danny had to get them off. Well.